Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about roleplay games and today we're going to be playing Zero Escape, 9 hours, 9 persons, 9 doors. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and did a lot of things actually. We started our search for Clover, which ended in tragedy as she has been found dead in the first class cabin bathroom. And in her hand, we found a note that basically gave us clues that led us straight to uh, the safe and we found out how to open it. Then we also learned that the bracelet for the ninth man is completely missing. It's somewhere that we have no idea where it is and there's just no way for us to know what's gonna happen next. But within the safe we found a note that told us a bunch of things. The first thing that it told us and the well, the one thing that it told us was that there was a nonary game nine years ago, and Snake seemed to have, seems to have participated in it. So this would be his second nonary game. And also, the people running the first nonary game, the one that Snake was in, were the people behind Cradle Pharmaceuticals, a pharmaceutical company that we have heard about before, and... Santa has told us that Ace is a part of that company, meaning that he very well could be behind something. So, without further ado, let's get into this. I want to know if the person I suspect is really the culprit. Wait, then you're saying... Yeah, I think I've got it figured out. I know who killed Snake and Clover. The atmosphere in the room changed. Grief was suddenly gone, replaced by a tension like a strap of leather stretched to its limit. Five sets of eyes stared at Junpei. He pretended not to notice. Anyway, if you could all please move to the big hospital room. I'll explain everything as soon as we get there. Then, almost as if on cue, the bell began to ring. They all heard it. It was the bell from the clock in the main staircase. The bell rang five times, then ceased. It was five o'clock. They had only an hour left. We don't have a lot of time left. Let's go! Slowly, one by one, they followed Junpei out of the bedroom. Actually, before we get started, I was hoping you could do something for me. Junpei stopped in front of door 3 and turned around. Ace, Seven, Lotus, could you please place your palms on the red? Um... Huh? Why? If we need to get to the shower room, why don't we just- No, we're not going inside. Once you've authenticated, step away from the door. Why? Please, just do it. Or perhaps you don't want to know who killed Snake and Clover. Junpei's implication was clear, and Seven understood perfectly. Ugh, fine. What about you, Ace? Lotus? Very well. Sure. Quickly, they pressed their palms onto the red. Once they had finished, they stepped away from the door as Junpei had instructed. Three asterisks shone from the red's display panel. Junpei approached it and held his bracelet over the scanner. He made quite sure he didn't place his palm on it and instead only brought his bracelet near it. The fourth asterisk appeared. Just as Junpei had expected, it was possible to authenticate without placing one's palm on the red so long as the bracelet was brought near it. Junpei pulled the lever down. Door three opened like a hungry mouth. Nine long seconds passed, and the door shut, unfed. Junpei walked slowly back to the others, who were waiting some distance from the door, talking to one another. Santa and Jun had joined them as well. It looked as though they hadn't found a chance to break into conversation yet. As Junpei approached, they turned to look at him, curiosity playing on their faces. Before long, the other three did as well. 
Clearly, they were all expecting some answers. Thanks. I appreciate your cooperation. Clearly, they'd hoped for something more forthcoming. He continued. By the way, Ace, would you mind if I asked you something? What is it? Do you know who I am? What? Which kind of question? Just answer it, please. Who am I? You're Junpei. Of course. Who else would you be? Unfortunately, that's the wrong answer. Actually, I'm Santa. What? Ace's voice was full of surprise, but it was also tinged with confusion and fear. Everyone else looked nearly as surprised. Santa looked especially shocked to discover he was actually someone else. If he spoke, however, the trap would be exposed. Junpei quickly continued. The clothes I'm wearing I borrowed from Junpei, and the clothes he's wearing are mine. We had a little swap. That's ridiculous! Impossible! So you're saying I'm not Santa? Of course you aren't! Why? What makes you so sure I'm not Santa? If you were Santa, then door 3 wouldn't have opened for us just now. 1 plus 7 plus 8 plus 3 equals 19. 1 plus 9 would be 10. The digital root would be 1. But the four of us just opened door 3. You can't possibly be Santa. Your bracelet number isn't 3. It's 5, right? Only then, when it was too late, did Ace realize his mistake. He set his jaw and glared at Junpei. You're exactly right. My bracelet number is 5. Just as he spoke, Junpei lifted his wrist up to show everyone the bright red 5 on his wrist. Sorry, Ace. I tricked you. Of course, I'm not really Santa. I'm Junpei. Who could possibly think I was? It's obvious I'm not. To think I was? Ridiculous. But I guess you couldn't see just how obvious it was. I asked you before, didn't I? What makes you so sure I'm not Santa? And you answered, if you were Santa, then door three wouldn't have opened for us just now. Most people wouldn't say something like that. As their justification for why I'm not Santa, I mean. The first thing that would come to anyone else's mind wouldn't be the bracelet number. There'd only be one thing they'd say. One sentence. You don't have his face. Ace. You have prosopagnosia. Am I right? Junpei's voice was quiet and calm. He knew the truth. So did Ace. You could hear a sudden buzz of conversation from the others. Prosopagnosia? What's that? He heard Lotus begin explaining it to him. Ace glanced at them, then turned back toward Junpei and sighed. <sighs> Very well. I confess. I have prosopagnosia. I could not differentiate human faces. Is that what this is about? You want to mock me for my disorder? No, no, not at all. I'm not making fun of you at all. In fact, I feel kind of bad for you. Now, the reason I brought this up is that there's an excellent chance that the person who killed Snake is prosopagnosia. Ace's face tightened, his eyes narrowed. What do you mean? Junpei leaned casually against the iron piping of one of the beds. I'll just come right out with it. I think it was you, Ace. You killed him. Junpei was suddenly very aware of five pairs of eyes on him. He had their undivided attention now. The room had grown very, very quiet. Junpei took a deep breath. That's ridiculous. What possible evidence do you- I have three pieces of evidence. The first, think back to a few hours ago. You made us argue over the three doors here in the big a hospital room. There's no way all seven people could go through them. Lotus suggested that we sacrifice one of us. Lotus looked away awkwardly. Junpei glanced at her and continued. Then you, Ace, said, I'll stay here. Why would you say something like that? It's pretty simple, really. He didn't want us to see the dead body in the shower room. You see, if Ace stayed behind, there were only two doors the rest of us could go through. Doors 7 and 8. There was no way we could get through door 3, the shower room. You knew that, didn't you, Ace? That's why you volunteered to stay behind. Come on now, I think that's going a bit far. I can understand if you're jealous of my bravery, but please, don't value my actions. 
I only wanted to save the rest of you. Surely you can understand my altruism. Altruism, huh? Junpei stared off into the darkness at something very interesting, and lazily began to dig a persistent bit of wax out of his ear. You already knew, didn't you? You knew that whichever doors we took, eventually we'd end up back in the big hospital room. What on earth are you saying? Of course I didn't know that. How could I have? Really? Yes, yes! Pleading was not something they'd heard from Ace before. Junpei pulled the piece of wax from his ear, glanced at it, and flicked it off into the darkness. Ah, uh, well, that's cool. I've still got two more pieces of evidence that say you're the killer. The second is that, as I said earlier, you have prosopagnosia. Then you mean to imply that a person who can't distinguish human faces must be a bad person? Junpei, they call that prejudice. No, no. I'm not that stupid. Then why? Well, before I explain, I suppose there's something I should tell you. The corpse in the shower room. It's not snakes. What? What? Ace's face went pale. The others looked confused as well. If the body wasn't snakes... I didn't put it together right away. There was something Clover told me. She said that Snake's left arm was prosthetic. He lost his real arm in an accident. But the body we saw in the shower room, let's call him Guy X, Guy X's left arm was definitely flesh and blood. In other words, Guy X couldn't possibly have been Snake. Oh god. No. That's impossible. Ace had started muttering deliriously to himself, shaking his head back and forth. Junpei was long past Karen. Let's say, hypothetically, that the killer didn't have prosopagnosia. If that were the case, he would immediately realize that Guy X wasn't Snake. Even if the clothes were the same as Snake's, their faces would be completely different. It would have been obvious that they were, were different people. And yet, they still killed him. Why? Why would they kill a stranger who'd only just shown up? On the other hand, if the killer did have prosopagnosia, it makes sense. They thought Guy X was Snake and killed him. Wait. Wait just a moment. Let's say you're right, and I mistook Guy X for Snake. Even if I did, I would have no motive to kill him. Why would I want to kill Snake? I can think of at least two motives. One, Snake knew about your past. If he ever revealed what he knew, that would have been really bad for you. You really didn't want that to ha happen. So to make sure Snake's mouth stayed shut, you killed him. Two. Snake had a grudge against you. You knew that, or at least you could have easily assumed he did. Even without exposing your identity, he was a threat to you. You never knew when you might be attacked. You couldn't ever let your guard down. Every moment was a moment he might try something. You didn't want that kind of danger hanging over you, so you... Hey, hold on a minute! For the first time since the beginning of Junpei's explanation, someone besides Ace spoke. What's the past that Ace wouldn't want us to know? Why did Snake have a grudge against him? Look at this. He handed Santa a small piece of paper. Santa squinted at the paper and began to read. The notary game was played once before, nine years ago. A person with a number two bracelet attended the game nine years ago. It was planned by the following four people. Cradle Pharmaceutical CEO Gintaro Hongo. What? Is this? Slowly, Santa looked up from the paper. His eyes met Junpei's. It's a message from Zero. It was in the safe in the first class cabin. Then, suddenly... Give me a break! Ace's face was red and shaking, and his voice was full of fury tinged with desperation. That paper is a lie! Someone is trying to frame me! Me. You said me, right? Junpei's eyes narrowed and the trap began to close. Ace inhaled sharply. His eyes flicked off of Junpei to something. Anything else. Wouldn't that mean that you're admitting you're Hongo, the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals? Or am I mistaken? It was as though a switch had been flipped. The color drained from Ace's face, and he realized what he'd done. His eyes went wide. Very well. I admit that much. I am certainly the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceutical, Gentaro Hongo. So what if I am? I don't know anything about this notary game that supposedly took place nine years ago. Everything on that scrap of paper is bullshit. Someone is trying to set me up, you see. First of all... First of all... Ace stammered as he tried desperately to work himself to a more tenable position. 
Junpei, you're claiming I did all this by myself. Think that over, all right? How could I have killed Snake all by myself? Not Snake, it was Guy X. I don't care who it was. You said the killer put this other man into door 3, right? Yeah, maybe. Then I couldn't have possibly done that alone. I couldn't have opened door 3 with only myself and Guy X. Nope, you could've. Whoa. What? Ace's face was tight, and his teeth were clenched. Junpei fixed him with a level stare. The trap was about to close. Actually, Ace, when you were unconscious, I took something from you. Remember when you were injected with that anesthetic and fell asleep in the big hospital room? Yeah, back then. I... took this. Junpei put his hand into his pocket. No, you couldn't have... Ace's right hand moved. Junpei smiled. I got you, Ace. Your right hand there tells me all I needed to know. You want to tell me what you were so worried about? What's in your pocket? It's the number 9 bracelet, isn't it? Ace, Guy X, the ninth man's bracelet. That was all you needed to open door 3. 1 plus 2 plus 9 equals 12. 1 plus 2 equals 3. That's how you killed Gaiax all by yourself, Ace. All you needed was the number 9 bracelet in your chest pocket. Ace lowered his hand from where it had stopped halfway to his pocket. He looked down at the floor, his face hidden from Junpei. All he could see was the corner of Ace's mouth twitching like a dying fish. If you want to play innocent, that's fine by me. Go ahead. Tell me I don't have the bracelet if that's what you want to do. But if you could take off your coat and hand it to me, I'd really appreciate it. Otherwise, we'll have to take it from you by force. Right, Seven? Yeah! It'd be my pleasure! Seven cracked his knuckles with a sound like gunfire. <laughs> Ace roared with laughter. He threw his arms wide and his head back and laughed, filling the room with a sound that scarcely belonged there. Then it stopped. His arms came down and his head dropped to look straight ahead at Junpei. His face was flat and cold, devoid of any emotion. Well done, Junpei. As you so correctly deduced, I have the number 9 bracelet. I retrieved it while we were searching for the missing hardware for the Red. I left the room I was supposed to search and headed to the first class cabin on B deck. His voice showed no emotion, no sense of remorse or interest. He was almost bored, as though he were reciting an especially dull corporate letter. My purpose was to obtain the number 9 bracelet. 9 is a potent ally in the Nonary game. Adding 9 to any set of numbers won't alter the digital root. 1 plus 9 equals 10. 1 plus 0 equals 1. 2 plus 9 equals 11. 1 plus 1 equals 2. 3 plus 9 equals 12. 1 plus 2 equals 3. As you can see, 9 is a very useful number here. With it, one can go anywhere with anyone. So I made for the first class cabin to obtain it. Ace successfully acquired the number 9 bracelet. He also found an unexpected bonus, the knife the ninth man had been holding. He slipped both of them into his chest pocket and left as quickly as he'd come. He walked down the stairs and headed back to where he was supposed to be. That was when he met Guy X and mistook him for Snake. Snake was on his way to the large hospital room and had not noticed Ace behind him. Ace made sure it stayed that way. He followed the man wearing Snake's clothes to door 3. When the man stopped, he walked up behind him, quietly, and called out, Snake. The man turned to look at Ace. He said nothing. No words came out of his half-open mouth. He seemed dazed somehow, almost like a man half asleep. Perhaps he had been drugged? It didn't matter to Ace. Ace was certain the man was Snake. He knew Snake had been a part of the Nonary game nine years before. Snake hadn't recognized Ace immediately, but he was blind. That much made sense. 
Why, then, hadn't Snake said anything to him? Surely he hadn't forgotten what happened to him in the Nonary game, but not once had he attempted to confront Ace. Perhaps his lack of sight had prevented him from recognizing Ace. Or perhaps Snake had conspired with Zero to deceive Ace. In either event, he was a threat, and it was better to deal with him sooner rather than later. Ace's mind was made up. He moved. He held the number 9 bracelet over the red. He waved his own bracelet in front of the red and finally grabbed Snake's arm and shoved his hand against the scanner panel. The door opened. Ace threw the man through it. Nine seconds later, the door shut. 81 seconds passed. The man inside the door passed away. After that, I returned to my post as though nothing had happened. After conducting my own search, I returned to the large hospital room when the 1am bell rang. Ace's eyes were cold and his cheeks were hollow and pallid. When he spoke, only his lips and tongue moved. The rest of his face was eerily still. Junpei glared at Ace. He took a deep breath and thought about the next question he had to ask. He didn't want to. He knew what the answer would be. He just didn't want to hear it. Junpei swallowed, then spoke. Ace, did you kill Clover? Yes. Why? Why did you kill her? She was Snake's sister. It was possible he had told her something dangerous. Additionally, she had gone through door one. It seemed like she might have found it. Found what? Why don't you go through door one yourself? Perhaps it's hidden somewhere. Seven and Lotus interrupted. Yeah, but Lotus and I went through door one too. We didn't see anything suspicious. Yes, I thought as much after I heard your report at the central stairs. I doubt the two of you could find it. But perhaps Clover was different. Perhaps she had found it. I was, therefore, desperate to find her. And at last I did, in the first class cabin. I spoke very calmly. Did you... see it? S see what? Don't act as if you don't understand. You were in the captain's quarters, weren't you? Huh? What are you talking about? Hmm. Very well. By the way, what are you doing here, Clover? What? Nothing! There's blood on your shoes. It looks fresh. Did you go take a look at the ninth man's corpse? I see. Your silence suggests that you noticed. You saw something, didn't you? You saw that his bracelet was gone. Clover ran. She made for the exit, but Ace stood in her way. You aren't going anywhere. He caught her by the collar as she passed and threw her to the floor, hard. She leapt back up and darted past him into the hallway. Ace followed at a run. He was faster. That was how I killed Clover. His face hadn't changed. If he felt guilt or remorse or anything one might feel after taking the life of another human being, it didn't show. You son of a bitch! Seven's whole body trembled with rage and his voice rumbled with hate. Santa's eyes were bloodthirsty and Lotus and June's faces were distorted by anger and hatred. Ace looked at them and smiled. It was a cold, cruel thing with no humor in it. He shook his head and sighed. I admit it. I've lost. I've lost completely and utterly. But don't misunderstand, Junpei. I didn't lose to you. I lost to Zero, not you. I'm rather disgusted by myself for falling into such a simple trap. 
And it was a trap, make no mistake. I was trapped and manipulated by Zero. The man I killed in the shower room. If he wasn't Snake, then I have no idea who he was. But he was wearing Snake's clothes, and that was no coincidence. He had also been injected with something that reduced his cognition and prevented him from identifying himself or resisting me. And we can't forget the components that were removed from the red before we arrived. I have no doubt that Zero planned all of this. Zero made sure that I would kill that man. It follows, of course, that Zero knew everything I would do. That I would try to take the number 9 bracelet. That I would try to kill Snake. Everything. Suddenly, Junpei remembered the paper he'd found in the safe. He remembered the last word Zero had written on it. I must punish them for the innocent lives they sacrificed. This is the only warning they will receive. That innocent souls might be saved, I now state the truth. Zero. And he remembered the other words. Words he'd heard from Clover. I think Zero is one of us. One by one, Junpei looked at the five people standing in front of him. Ace. Santa. June. Seven. Lotus. Zero is one of us. No, Junpei paused. There's one more person. Snake. It was clear now that the man who died in the shower room was not Snake. That meant that Snake was almost certainly still alive. Perhaps Snake was Zero. Perhaps Snake had made Gaiax wear his clothes so that he would appear to be dead. Where was Snake now? Perhaps he was somewhere, laughing at them. If he was Zero, surely he had lied about many other things. Was he... watching them? Well, I believe I've finished with my confession. Why don't we get moving? He sounded as if he'd just finished doing nothing more exciting than describing the weather. For Santa, it was the last straw. What the hell is this shit? We aren't going anywhere, you son of a bitch! We're gonna leave your ass here to rot! Why? Because I killed Clover? That's ridiculous. Why are you so upset that I killed the little bitch? She was nothing to you, a stranger you only met a few hours ago. Am I wrong? You bastard! Seven roared and lifted a fist that would likely have shattered Ace's jaw, but someone else was faster. It was Lotus. She stepped toward Ace, raised a fist of her own, and drove it straight into his nose. Hmm. <laughs> You've got some fire, don't you? I confess I rather like a tough woman. He sniffed and wiped a small trickle of blood from his nose and raised an eyebrow. Well, maybe you'd like another one, then. Ah, uh, before that, let me give you one of my own. Huh? Lotus scarcely had time to blink. A snaked his arms around her and pulled Lotus's back up against him. In the same motion, he reached into his coat pocket. It was a gun. The revolver. Almost lazily, he tilted it to point at Lotus's head. If any of you so much as blink, I won't hesitate to pull this trigger. I've already killed two, no, three people. Don't think I'm not ready to make it four. Three people? What do you mean? Hmm. Very well. Let me take this opportunity to illuminate you. The person who killed the ninth man was me. Although I suppose to be more accurate, I encouraged him to get himself killed. While we were examining the main staircase, he came to me and told me his name. I recognized it at once, so I gave him a little push. Just a little white lie. It seems the settings for the dead were altered. Now it only requires a single person to deactivate the detonator in the bracelet. Investigate what's beyond door 5. We'll meet again later. <laughs> okay, have a good one, guys. I'm going off ahead now. Well then. Shit, why isn't it stopping? God damn it! You, you lied! 
Oh, open the door, please. I'm begging you. Help me. Please, get me out of here. Get me out of here. Uh, oh my god, oh my god, there's no time left. Listen, I was lied to. He lied to me. He put me in here. It was him. He killed me. It was him. Yeah! I had four reasons for killing him. One. As I said before, in the Nonary game, the number nine bracelet is of utmost importance. If I had allowed him to keep such a useful tool, he, or it, would have become a threat to me. As such, I decided that he should be eliminated early on. Two. I wanted the number nine bracelet. If I could manage to obtain it, I would be able to manipulate the game as I saw fit. I would be unable to acquire the bracelet unless its owner was dead. Three. Even setting aside his number, he would have been nothing but trouble to me. He was aware of my past. He knew what had happened here nine years ago. It was important that I eliminate him before he was able to disseminate this information. 4. Lastly, I wish to conduct a simple test, a test to see if this nunnery game was serious or a poor attempt at a joke. I needed to be quite sure. As such, I encouraged him to act against the rules so that I might observe the, the outcome. Junpei glared at him. I don't get your third motive. What the hell happened nine years ago? Didn't I say? The nonary game was played. I planned it out and I conducted its execution. Why? What on earth was it supposed to do? I don't really think I have any obligation to tell you that. Ace smirked. He was trying to provoke them and it was working. Although Ace had paid very little attention to Lotus after catching her, the gun had never wavered from her temple. She looked quite pale and when she spoke her voice shook. Hey! What's with this gun? Where did he... get this? Why don't you tell her, Santa? Santa ground his teeth and glared at Ace. On the other side of door six, we found the gun in the coffin in the cargo room, right? The bastard must have grabbed it when we weren't looking. Indeed I did. That was a pretty serious mistake, you know. Just saying you intended to leave it behind. Ace laughed, a short derisive snort and he gave Junpei a sickeningly pitying look. Well, there isn't much time left. I'll be off then. Where are you going? Do I really need to explain? I had assumed it would be obvious. I have the number nine bracelet, and now I have Lotus. Nine plus eight plus one equals 18, one plus eight equals nine. Wasn't there a door with a nine on it in the room that looked like a church? That's where you're going, isn't it? And how do you know that? Santa told me about it while we were looking for Clover. I see. Well, you are correct. That is my destination. But now I must say goodbye. To all of you. Ah, and please, don't forget my warning. Move and I'll pull the trigger. I don't need her alive to open the door, you know. As he spoke, Ace began backing toward the door, practically dragging Lotus behind him. Junpei, Santa, June, and Seven stood frozen. Ace had the face of a man gone mad. They had no doubt he would pull the trigger. Ace had reached the exit. He forced Lotus to open it, then turned and addressed them once more. Goodbye. And then he stepped through the door. It fell shut. In the blink of an eye, they were gone. As soon as Ace and Lotus were gone, Junpei and the others leapt for the door in pursuit of Ace. But just as Junpei laid his hand on the doorknob, there was a noise behind him. He looked over his shoulder. June was kneeling on the floor, breathing heavily. Hey! June, what happened? Are you alright? Santa ran to June and wrapped his arm around her before she could collapse all the way. Jesus, you're burning up! Your fever's back! Are you okay? June's fever had returned, again for no apparent reason. Her eyes were watery and her eyelids drooped. Her breath came in dry, shallow gasps. I'm okay. Really, I'm fine. You should be worrying about Lotus.
She was breathing hard now and she could barely summon the strength to talk. Junpei was torn. He couldn't leave Jun alone in the state she was in. But every moment that they waited, Ace was farther away, Lotus's life in his hands. What was Junpei supposed to do? Jun's eyes drifted to Junpei's. She managed to muster a weak smile. Jumpy, don't worry about me. I just need a little rest and I'll be fine. Don't you remember? I just needed to rest a little bit last time. So please, please save Lotus. Think about what Ace has already done, Junpei. When he's got what he needs from Lotus, you really think he's gonna let her just walk away? God damn it! You guys go on ahead. As soon as June starts feeling better, we'll follow you. Go! Junpei looked at June. She nodded once. She couldn't manage much more. But it was all the confirmation Junpei needed. His resolve was set. Alright. Come on, Seven. We're going after Ace. Hell yeah! Santa, you t take good care of June. I'm trusting you. Santa nodded. Junpei turned before he had a chance to change his mind and started running toward the door. He could hear Seven's heavy footsteps behind him. Let's go! Junpei and Seven exploded into the hallway, their feet pounding the metal floor as they ran. Junpei and Seven had finally arrived at the church, exhausted and out of breath. As their lungs struggled to catch their breath, their eyes frantically scanned the room. No sign of Ace or Lotus. You think they already went through? He reached up to wipe a palm of a palmful of sweat from his brow. Maybe. Even as he spoke, Junpei was already on his way to the larger of the number nine doors. He looked at the red. The display panel read vacant. He spun around and headed toward the smaller door. This red would tell him a face and lotus had moved to another room. Engaged. It's occupied. That means Ace and Lotus went through here. Yeah, it seems like it. Jim Payne 7 stepped away from the door. They retreated to the center of the room and began to talk. What do we do now? Yeah. What should we do? And we are going to find out what we are going to do in the next episode. I know this was a bit of a longer one, but I feel like there wasn't really a good place to stop at any point, and I didn't want to interrupt stuff too much. Anyways, next episode, stuff is going to get even crazier. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!